Yeah, hello. Harrison, I don't mean to be a pest, dear. But your rent is still due. I know, I'm sorry. I completely forgot to send the check. You take credit cards by a chance? I'm sorry, dear. I can't do that. As a matter of fact, your last check bounced, remember? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Thanks for reminding me. Take care. <clears throat> by the way, dear, is your new suspense novel out in the bookstores yet? I can hardly wait to read it. Um, no. Not yet, but soon. Thanks for asking. I could tell just by a single glance I was headed for a big romance and I know that we should take the chance cause I'm gonna love you yes I'm gonna This great love story will be ending well Cause I'm gonna love you Excuse me. Hey. I know noticed that you weren't having too much luck with that machine over there. And well um I'm done with my newspaper and I thought you might want it because you couldn't here. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm Harrison. Hey, Poochie. <coughs> Boogaloo doesn't like men. <clears throat> uh, what do you do? What do I do? I'm a writer, you know, novelist. Well, I read a lot. <clears throat> Anything I might know? Well, uh, I write a lot. You know, I haven't been published yet, but it's getting close. <laughs> Good luck. Thanks.
Yeah, hello. Harrison, it's Melissa. Melissa? I thought I'd call before I came over. Professional courtesy. How are you? Melissa, what a surprise. When's the last time I saw you, hmm? Well, I haven't seen you since you went to Europe. Uh, that would be six, seven years ago. Why now? I've been thinking of you lately. Yeah, right. You must want something. What is it? Can we come in? We? Come on. No. Come on. Jenny, this is an old friend, Harrison. Here's my card. Yeah, it's cute. Can we come in? It's a pretty nice place for you. Don't tell me you got a job or something. No, the rent's cheap until it gets sold. Listen, um... <clears throat> I have to go away to Canada for a week with a friend. I'm planning to take the bar there. The bar? Legal attorney bar. I've been practicing criminal law in California for three years. Lately, I've become very intrigued with the Canadian judicial system. Well, that's great, eh? <laughs> but is it legal for you to practice in Canada? I have dual citizenship, remember? Yeah, so, um, why do I need to know all this? I'd like you to take Jenny for me for a week, or two. What? You're the only person I trust. What about your mother? She's still in Europe, and I've already asked all my friends. There's got to be somebody else you can call. I mean, your sister, hire a babysitter, for God's sake. I mean, this is crazy. Why leave her with a stranger, when I know you so well? Know me so well? What, are you kidding me? Where have you been for the last seven years? It's only for two weeks. I can't take her up to Canada with me. Besides, Fred doesn't seem to like children. Fred? Oh, Fred must be charming. He is charming. He just doesn't have time for children, that's all. Unlike you. It's not like you have anything better to do now, is it? Hey, you know, I'm getting really close to having one of my manuscripts published, okay? So just back off. Well, there you go. It's perfect. You work from home, you're your own boss. What better environment to babysit Jenny? Taught her to do dishes. Not the paper ones, I hope. <laughs> Look, Bliss, you know, I'd like to help you out here, but I can't. This is crazy. You didn't give me any notice. It's like, no. Fine. I'll pay you. What? No. I, I, I can't. Well, I can afford it. It's not the you point. obviously can afford not to. It's just for two weeks. It'll be easy here. No, I... Thank you. I can't take this. Yes, you can. Oh, by the way, um, I, just to make sure there's enough in that account, I postdated the check. Be good by Friday, I promise you. Okay. Everything she needs is in here, okay? I've got a plane to catch. Here's my card. If you need anything, just page me. You are a doll. I know you want to come with me, but Mommy's going to be really busy. Harrison will take good care of you, I promise. You're going to have much more fun here. Fred's waiting for me. Remember to brush your teeth and don't drink the tap water. And make sure Harrison gets you into bed by 9 o'clock, okay? I love you, honey. I'll be back soon. I'll call you as soon as I can. No. Have fun. I, I trust you. What? Yeah. All right, ten minutes, and then uh, set the other one up at two forty-five. Thanks. Okay, I gotta go. Right. I told you, honey, we didn't have time for a visit. I didn't realize it would affect me this way. 
Okay. Well, you either leave her alone in a hotel, the total stranger while we take care of business, or you leave her with someone that you know and you trust. Right? We'll only be gone ten days. Right? Besides, I have a cell phone. <laughs> you wanna you wanna watch some television? Want to get something to eat? No. You want to draw? So, um, you go to school? In the summer. Hmm. What grade are you in? The first one. You know, you remind me of this girl down at the coffee shop. She's pretty talkative, too. <laughs> Jenny? Shouldn't you, uh, be in bed by now? It's not nine o'clock. All right, well, uh, you got ten minutes. Then you have to go to bed, okay? So look, I'm giving you my bed until I figure out some sleeping arrangements for you. You gonna be okay? All right. Have you seen my dodo bird? You fixed him! Mm-hmm. Took him to the stuffed animal hospital. I had him all patched up for you. You all right? Mm-hmm. Harrison? Hmm? Will you read me a bedtime story? Yeah, well, sure. I mean, I... Really have anything that's you know appropriate to read to you? But... Make it up. Huh? You can make it up. You know something original. Hmm. Boy, I don't think so, Jenny. I'm not very good at that. But hey, my mom says you're a writer. You know? Ah, oh, your mom told you that. Yeah, but not a very good one. Huh. Oh. All right. All right. Well, I think you're. Okay. There was this. Large duck. Kind of look a lot like yours. And, um... He's not a duck. He's a dodo bird, you silly. Right. Okay. Right. There was this, uh, this, uh, bird. It's Mr. Dodo. You know dodo birds are extinct, right? Except for Mr. Dodo, right? Right. So the, um... Let's see. The uh, Museum of Exotic Birds yeah, hired Professor Bigley to go track and capture Mr. Dodo. <gasps> ah, don't worry. Mr. Dodo ain't no dodo. He just happens to be one of the smartest birds around. Headed down to the jungles of Africa to bring back the priceless dodo.
You old enough to read? Of course I am. You think I'm stupid or something? No, it's just that, you know, I don't hang out with too many six-year-olds. Comics? Actually, I prefer the business section. I like to see how my stocks are doing. What? I'm just kidding. You know her? Who? That girl. No, actually. Why? You're drooling. I'm not drooling. Do you love her? You're too young to know what love is, you know that? You do not. Oh, really? What is it? This. Finish your bagel. So I was thinking that maybe, you know, after we're done here today, we could uh, go to the park and play with some dogs. And it sounded like fun. Excuse me. Are you using this chair? Oh, no, go ahead. You can take it. Here's my car. What's your name? My name's Holly. Hey, where's your mom? Oh, her. She's in Canada with her stupid boyfriend. She just left you here all by yourself? Oh, don't be silly. I'm with my friend, Harrison. Well, it seems kind of old for you, don't you think? Oh, we're not like that. He's just kind of taking care of me, you know, until my mom comes back. <sighs> if she comes back. Why wouldn't she come back? Of course she's going to come back. So what's her name? Oh, it's Boogaloo. Hey, look at that. She likes you. Well, what do you do? Excuse me? Your job. How do you support oh, yourself? Oh, right. Well, I'm a secretary. You know, typing, computers, nothing too exciting. Do you have a boyfriend? Well, why do you want to know? No reason in particular. Hmm. Well, no. No, I don't have a boyfriend, and I don't plan on getting one anytime soon. You sound bitter. Yeah, I guess you could say that. Well, I better be going. It was very nice meeting you, Holly. It's very nice meeting you, too, Jenny. Since I gave you my card, can you give me yours? You know, in case I need to ask you any secretary questions. Okay. I'll give you my card, just as long as you promise you won't give it to anybody else. I'll call you sometime. We'll do lunch. <laughs> Bye. Bye. This is a miniature tape recorder. It's voice activated. Oh, how's it work? Well, I'm writing the instructional manual for it right now. But when you turn it on, it starts to record when it hears a sound or someone talking. Neato. But why are you writing a manual? So when people buy it, they know how to work it properly. That's why. Why are you doing it? Because this is how I pay my bills. This is my part-time job. Is it easy? It would be easier if someone gave me the instructions for it. But that's your job, silly. I don't know. Here, take it. Go ahead. You mean I can keep it? Uh-huh, it's yours. Wow, cool! Press record right there. Got it? And then speak into the mic. This is Jenny Morrison. Good morning, sunshine. And 
Raising his oversized tranquilizer dart gun, Fester Bigley muttered to himself, history books, here I come. <laughs> Talk louder. Mr. Dota can't hear you. Oh, right. OK. <clears throat> So then Professor Bigley focused through the crosshairs of his oversized tranquilizer dart gun. <laughs> this is too easy, he chuckled to himself. And he pulled the trigger. Bang! The dart shot out, echoing through the dark jungle. Professor Bigley's smile just disappeared. Because Mr. Dodo had disappeared too. He got away! You bet he did. How? That's the amazing thing. You see, Mr. Dodo's a magical bird. After all, he is the only one of his kind in existence, and the magic of Mother Nature has granted him special powers to stay alive. Mr. Dodo's only purpose in life right now is to keep from becoming extinct. I gotta find a place to park the car, so... And why? Because I'm coming in with you. Are you kidding me? You'll embarrass me. What? Oh, there's my piano teacher now. Okay, <laughs> see you. Bye. Okay. You got my number, right? You call me when you're ready to be picked up. All right. Okay? All right. Mr. Sampson's office. Uh, your daughter is here to see you. Shall I send her up? My, my what? Your little girl. What did you say your name was again, sweetie? Jenny. With a Y. She says Jenny with a Y. Should I send her up? Uh, no, no, no. I'll be right down. you get your license. <laughs> Listen, I'm so sorry to bother you at work, but this is really important. Oh, yeah, well, I'm sure it must be. It is, it really is. Wow, gee, this is where you work? It looks like my mom's place, only bigger. Why, hi. I didn't know you had a daughter. Uh, I, I don't. I'm just a friend from out of town, just visiting. <laughs> She's adorable. What's her name? How old is she? Uh, I can answer those questions by myself. Holly is not my interpreter. My name is Jenny, and I am six. Oh, well, I'm very sorry, dear. I really have to go to the convention now. It, it was very nice meeting you. It was nice meeting you, too, Mrs. Stevens. How did you know my name? You're wearing a name tag? Oh, of course. You're quite an unusual child. Why, thank you. I find you quite unusual also, Mrs. Stevens. <sighs> ah. All right, Jenny, what's this all about, huh? How many words a minute can you type? Oh, is this an interview? I don't know, I guess about 80. Wow. You don't even look at the keys now, do you? No, nope, no, I suppose I don't. Any other questions? Oh, yeah. Do you remember when I met you at the coffee shop? Uh, yes, yes, I do. Well, do men really come from Mars? And do us women really come from Venus?
What took you so long? Excuse me? Harrison? Melissa? I'm in Ottawa. It's just beautiful here. Look, I can't take long. I've got a big meeting in Toronto tomorrow morning. Oh, great. I'm glad you're having such a splendid time. Actually, I was just calling to check on Jenny. How is she? Oh, she's great. She's a, she's a real little angel. Put her on the phone for me for a minute. She's not here right now. Where is she? She's at her piano lesson. What piano lesson? Basically, that's it. <laughs> well, I guess I'll understand better when I grow up. You know, I'm just a kid. Yeah. Hey, you want me to ride down with you? Um, that's okay. I caused enough trouble today. You didn't cause any trouble. Well, bye, Holly. <laughs> bye. My ride's waiting. Bye, Jenny. All right, so let me get this straight. You want me to transcribe this tape? Exactly, but there's gonna be more. Why? I can't tell you. I'll pay you to do it, please. <laughs> oh, you're gonna pay me, really? With what, marbles? I've been saving up my allowance. It was supposed to go to my college education, but this is an emergency. All right. All right, I'll tell you what. You keep your money, you don't have to pay me. But if I ever need a favor, you owe me. Big time. Deal? Deal. Hey, watch it. Excuse me. Did you see a little girl about this tall? You want me to walk you to the door? Oh, that's okay. I have a key. All right. Oh, don't forget this. Okay. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Thank you for everything. You sorry for what? You sorry for lying to me? Or are you sorry for scaring me half to death? Where were you? Hey, over here, look at me. Where were you? If I don't answer you, that means I didn't hear you. What? Go to your room. It's not my room. I said go. I'm old enough to know what's right for me. Oh, really? Why don't you stop acting like an adult and start acting like a kid? Why don't you stop acting like a kid and start acting like an adult? Go to your room. Get out of here. Move it. Now! Faster! Melissa, everything's fine. She's in bed. Nothing to worry about. Oh, uh, well, I'm glad to hear it. Who's this? <laughs> I'm sorry. My name's Miss Anderson. I drove your daughter home from work today. Jenny's got a job. Well, I wouldn't put it past her. I, um, I'm just calling to make sure that she's all right. Yeah, everything's fine. I, um... I hope she didn't bother you. Oh, no, 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 not at all. Your daughter's an amazing person, Mr... Tyler, Jenny's not my daughter. I'm just taking care of her while her mother's out of town for a while. <laughs> That's so funny. 
I, I'm sorry, it's just that, you know, I automatically just assumed that Jenny was your daughter, and all day long people were assuming that she was my daughter, so I know exactly how you feel. Right. <laughs> anyway, it was really nice to talk to you. Yeah, how did you come across Jenny, anyway? Hello? Hello? Mr. Dodo. Harrison tells me you've been in your room long enough. Don't want to play. Come on. Better hurry. Where are you? Over here, kid. Don't be afraid. I'm not afraid, silly. Who's afraid of a stuffed Dodo anyway? You got a point there, kid. So what do you have? How about some hot chocolate? Where's Harrison? Well, he's probably around here somewhere. So what do you say, kid? How about some marshmallows with that hot chocolate, huh? I love marshmallows. <sighs> How come people get mad at each other? Well, I've never been able to figure that one out. I think it's because they get really scared, you know. Whoops get scared too? Of course they do. Everybody gets scared. Then they get mad at each other and they say things they don't really mean. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry for yelling at Harrison earlier. Well, I'm sure he probably forgives you. Am I going through a midlife crisis? <laughs> no, kid. You got plenty of years ahead of you. Can I ask you a question? Sure. How come I don't have a daddy like my friend Cindy and Charlotte and Susie? Well, I don't know, kid. What does your mom say? She said that Fred, Frederick, if he asked her to marry her, he'd be my dad. Hmm, well, then I guess you'll have a dad. But he's not my real dad. I mean, besides, he barely even pays any attention to me. My mom sometimes doesn't even pay attention to me. I like Harrison. He pays a lot of attention to me. Well, I think it's safe to say I can speak for Harrison, too, and tell you that he loves talking to you also. I'm jealous. I'm sorry I made you worry earlier. I'm sorry I got so angry with you. I was just upset. You know, he didn't call me to come pick you up. Keep eating cream cheese like that, you'll be lucky if you reach seven. Well, if you weren't so lazy and you learned how to cook, you wouldn't have to come here every morning. I like it here. Isn't it cheaper to make breakfast at home? It's so expensive eating out. You want juice or milk, huh? Chocolate milk. Given in to my magical charms. <laughs> hey, look, I um, I just want to get front with you, okay? I see you here every day, and I just, I just really want to talk to you. That's all. My dog seems to have accepted you. Yeah, you know, you know, I, I see you here every day by yourself. You're always reading a different book, and well, me being a writer, I thought we could talk. So what do you write? Well, mystery, suspense, you know, pretty eclectic stuff. I just, I'll try to write something that's commercial. Oh, know. right, you want to make a lot of money. That would be nice, yeah. Why don't you write something you care about? Oh, I'm, I'm not sure what I care about would be of any interest to anyone else. 
won't sell it. You know? Well, whatever makes you happy. Oh. I always forget to take these with food. Mm. I actually have an iron deficiency. Really? Yeah, my shirts are always wrinkled. <laughs> so, does that um, usually work with all the girls? No. Just the ones down at the laundromat. <laughs> I, I gotta go. I gotta get to work. Come on, Boogaloo. Bye. It was nice to talk yeah, to you too. again. Yeah. Come on. How come people who like each other avoid each other? I don't know. I guess people are just afraid to show their true emotions. Everybody has a comfort zone, you know, meaning that they're comfortable just where they are, just how they are, you know? And once you leave that lifestyle, well, you're leaving your comfort zone. They're afraid to show how they feel. Are you afraid to show me how you feel? About what? Well, do you like me enough that you'd want me to stay with you? Yeah, I like you enough that I want you to stay with me. But you can't. But I have fun with you. My mom doesn't have time to play with me. I'm just a friend of your mother's, you know? I, I have no legal right to you whatsoever. Well then, adopt me. Adopt you? I can't even take care of myself. What makes you think I can take care of you? Well, I can take care of you and I'll adopt you. Well, I'm not sure that's a possibility, but I'll tell you what, I'll look into it. Thanks. Flight 292, arriving at gate C. Hello? Hi, it's me, Harrison. Oh, hey. Is Jenny in bed? <clears throat> yeah, she is. As a reminder, she has no piano lessons. As a matter of fact, she has no lessons at all. Don't fall for that one again, Harrison. No, it's just a misunderstanding, all right? How are things up north? Pretty good. I've been admitted to the bar. Hey, I'll drink to that. You know, your incisive humor never ceases to astound me. Listen, I have a favor to ask of you. What's that? There's an excellent school up here that I want to enroll Jenny in. Academically, it's perfect for her and it's private. But I need you to pick up her passport. She needs a passport? The school requires it for foreign students. I applied for it before I left, so it should be ready. What I need you to do is fax me a copy up here. Yeah, sure, no problem. Um, Somebody to ask you. Sure, Harrison, but listen, make it fast. I'm at the airport. I'm uh, flying to Philadelphia to meet with Fred and a client. <clears throat> Look, Jenny and I are getting along great, and, and she really likes it here. That's, that's nice, Harrison, but listen, they just called my flight. We'll, we'll talk about this when I get back. Is that okay? Bye. No, but it, ha it has to do with maybe... Hello? Um, Melissa? Is it? Yep. Yeah? Want me to go in with you? No, that's okay. Holly knows I'm coming. You know, I wanted to meet this friend of yours, this Holly, sometime. I'm sure you would. I mean, if she's one of your friends, I'm sure she's a really nice girl, right? She's just afraid of men. You don't really scare her. Yeah, okay. Look, I'll pick you up here at 6. Oh, well, that's okay. Holly can drive me. I mean, Holly's parents can drive me? No, you don't understand. I'll pick you up here at 6. We're not going to have a repeat of what happened last time, okay? Okay. Those graham crackers. Mr. Dodo was very angry. So he flapped wow. his wings and crashed. You really do type fast. <laughs> you know, this guy's pretty funny. You know, he really gets into this stuff. Yeah, you should see him when he acts like Mr. Dodo. <laughs> his stories are so great. He makes them up as he goes along. Yeah, so what's he gonna do with them? Nothing. He spends his time writing other stories on his typewriter. Boring stuff. Oh, well, then it was a very good idea that we get these down on paper. Do you ever want to get married? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I did. Why? Do you want to get married? Well, there was this boy in kindergarten named Corey. We talked about marriage, but his dad said we had to wait until Corey stopped wetting the bed. Oh, well, I guess that does seem pretty sensible. Besides, he ate the finger paints. It's really gross. Ugh. Why didn't you get married? Pretty much the same reason. <laughs> <laughs> Actually.
Actually, it's like this long, dull story, and I'm not going to bore you with it. Is it a sad story? Well, let's just say he's not exactly what he appeared to be. So it rained graham crackers all night, and Mr. Dodo got his bedtime snack after all. I have an idea. How'd you like some graham crackers? Yeah! Is this the mother's maiden name? Morrison, that's correct. Oh, your daughter is adorable. Her photo turned out very well. I'm not her father. Oh, now, I must have you sign that receipt form. And, and here's a copy of her birth certificate. You can have that back now. Oh, I also must see a copy of your driver's license, Mr. Tyler, just to confirm that you really are her father. After all, we can't be giving out passports to just anyone these days. I'm not her father. How'd you know my name? Well, is all the information on the birth certificate correct for the child? Is anything wrong? Hello? Just when were you planning to tell me that she's my daughter? Hmm? How did you... The birth certificate. Look, I would have found out sooner or later. I never asked you for a nickel in child support. You know what? What this child needs has nothing to do with money. Just a minute. Listen. I am deeply touched that you have now decided to start being a father. But you listen to me, Harrison. I have been both mother and father to that little girl for the first six years of her life. I did it without your help then, and I can continue to do so now. Maybe if you'd been financially responsible, if you'd even attempted to get a real job, maybe I would have told you about her then. You see what I'm saying? It's all about the money with you, Melissa. Yes. Yes, it is. Wake up, Harrison. I am working very hard to make a living so that I can send my daughter to one of the best schools in North America. I am going to see to it that Jenny gets a good start in life. Look, I can't discuss this right now. I will be picking Jenny up. A week from Thursday. <sighs> Goodbye, Harrison. have a very nice young man who's ready to move into your place. Morning. Morning, sleepyhead. Want some juice? <clears throat> I'll get it. Do you want some? Yeah, thanks. Your mom called last night. And she didn't want to talk to me? No, she said that she was in a rush. You know, if she had the time, then she'd That's OK. I know how she is. Yeah. She, um, she's coming to pick you up next Thursday. But I was really starting to like it here. I know. I was getting used to having you here, too. But, you know, she's your mom, and I'm just... My dad. You know? How do you know? I overheard it on the phone last night. 
Now I know why I love you. And so he pulled apart the bars of the cage with his powerful wings. Keep going. And he flew to the top of the trees. Dodos can't fly, Daddy. Right, okay, so he climbed to the top of the trees. And when he got to the top, he pulled out his binoculars and he scanned the distant horizon. But there was no one there. He seemed to be all alone once again. Must be lonely being a dodo. Well, he wasn't alone for long. You see, Professor Bigley was on his trail. And as he cautiously approached the deep, dark shadows of the jungle trail, Professor Bigley couldn't help but consider the consequences of his trek through the most dangerous world of all. And there, after cutting through the thicket of the jungle foliage, Professor Bigley spots his prize, the famous and until now believed to be extinct dodo bird. I don't want to go next week. Why can't I stay with you? Um, well, uh, Janet, uh, I need to support the both of us. But you can. So far, I can't. Yeah, I owe taxes on my taxes. You don't believe you can write, do you? Why are you always working? Because eventually I'm going to get this this inspiration and this great idea is just gonna happen. I'm gonna write it down and I'm gonna sell it. I'm gonna make a lot of money and I'm gonna become famous and rich. And then you can come stay with me. How's that? How do you come up with this great idea when you're always so uptight? What if you didn't try so hard? Don't weeds grow whether you want them to or not. Sometimes the more you don't want them to, they just keep growing. I know, my mom tries everything to try to kill them. They just keep growing. Just see things the way they are. Why complicate them? Do your puzzle. Looks like your little friend is late. Well, maybe we can do a few laps. She said she was coming straight from work. Work? I thought you said she was in the first grade with you. Oh, I mean, um, homework. Yeah. yeah. Goggles on? I can't wait till I can go on one of these by myself. Yeah, well, you know what? Don't speed it up. You have plenty of time. Go, Pilot, ready? All systems go, dude. Fire it up, man. trying to pull a wise guy. Do you know what those things cost? Oh, relax, Bob. We're just having some fun. Yeah, right. Yeah, you want to drive like that? Get off my track. And you, Maria and Andretti. Listen, Toots. I see you driving like that. I'll make sure they revoke your license. You, you do ought to be ashamed of yourself. What kind of example are you setting for that kid? Yeah, what kind of example are you setting for me anyway? Oh, uh, chill out, Bob. Just give us a bill. I'll pay for hers, huh? Want to get some ice cream, Holly? Come on. Holly? Holly?
have no legal right to you whatsoever. Well, then adopt me. Adopt you? I can't even take care of myself. What makes you think I can take care of you? Well, I can take care of you and I'll adopt you. So if we have almost a week, that's enough time for you to find a real job. And then I can stay. I wish it were that easy. Excuse me. I thought you might like to have this. So, do you have a go-karting license? That was you? Yeah. Fooled you. Oh, you. If you ever do that to me again, I promise I'll strand you on a deserted island. Hey, we had fun. You didn't tell me you were trying to set us up. You didn't ask. Oh, look, a cute puffer managed your golf. You're really sweet on him, aren't you? Uh, you're really pushy, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's so funny? Nothing. Nothing. Shoot your ball. You talking yeah. about me again? Oh, please, no. don't be so vain. Just, yeah. just shoot. Uh, no. shh. Oh, <laughs> I'm still winning. What? You're still winning. Wait, 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 wait. It's winning. not over yet. Red ball, side pocket, every time. Ah, it's not red, it's orange. Well, I'll admit it, I get my oranges and my reds mixed up. It's funny, I thought it was red, too. <laughs> You're both colorblind. But I'm still the champion. <laughs> You're the champion, I'm the champion. I'm the champion. I think you missed that one on purpose. What? Are you kidding me? I don't miss anything on purpose. You missed yours on purpose. Welcome to the next hole, the rotten egg! Oh, that's a good one. So everyone in the office is looking at me like I'm completely out of my mind. Right. It turns out that I'm having a reaction to the dose of niacin in my new vitamins. You were turning lobster red, right? Yeah. The same thing happened to me when I was 12. I thought I was going to explode. Oh, God, it's awful. It's like you're wearing this wool sweater and it's itching you and you just can't get it uh -huh. off. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So how long have you been a secretary? Oh, God, I don't know. It seems like forever. <laughs> is, it, is it challenging enough? Hey. I type 80 words a minute. I know Mac, DOS, Word, perfect. What are you talking about? Oh, did, did you ever get lonely? Oh, well, that's funny coming from you. What do you do all day, huh? Day in, day out, hour upon hour, you're just sitting at your typewriter, typing away at your novel. Yeah, I guess you're right. Uh -huh. Besides, I have to be very independent. I don't need to be with somebody or around somebody to feel complete. I admire you for that. You do? Yeah. It says a lot about you. Stranger walked down the beach. She had long, flowing blonde hair, and she was mysterious. She had dark blue eyes, as blue as the ocean. Man, this is really bad. She's pretty neat, huh? Who? Holly, you really like her, don't you? Yeah, I guess I do. You didn't open your mail today. No, it's probably just bills and manuscript rejections. Oh, can I open this one? Yeah, knock yourself out. Dear sir. Just right there. I was really counting on this one. Why don't you just, um, why don't you go tack it up with the other ones over there, huh? Why do you keep these if they don't say good things? It's only a piece of paper. You know, I'd like to see Holly again. How did you call her? 
And what if she says she's busy? Get over it. You're afraid of everything, aren't you? Look, there it is. The rim of the world. So how'd you meet her mom? Oh. <laughs> she and I went to high school together. I was a freshman, she was a senior. It was doomed from the start, but this looks like an we made it work for a while. We almost got married, Is and we ended up breaking you know? up six, seven years That's ago. Really so she was way too serious. She never laughed at any of my jokes. Well, I've never heard you say anything funny. Hey. <laughs> Are you crazy? No one's gonna find them. That'd be pretty strange for you. I mean, all of a sudden somebody tells you, "Hey, you have a daughter." Yeah. I don't understand how she could keep something like that from you. I don't know. I guess I don't think she thought I'd be a responsible father. No. I'm not the type to get a regular job, and she knew it. Well, what she didn't she didn't believe in your writing? <laughs> no. She thought I was playing with it. You know, she didn't know that I was really serious about it. I really loved it. You know? I'm gonna make it. No, well, I bet you are. I mean, I. I think a lot of your stuff's really funny. Oh, right, like you've read anything I've written. Unless, of course, you saw those two articles in uh, The Progressive Farmer last year, but... Yeah, yeah, that's it. I mean, I happen to have a lifetime subscription, see? Right, yeah. right. Blackstone's after gold! There's an old here. Oh! Hey, pumpkin. You watching the movie? Not when I'm blinking. Mm. So, when's that monster coming up? Mrs. Olin, not till next Tuesday. Not the landlady. What monster are you talking about? I told her this was a Godzilla flick. Harris. Yeah. Um, <laughs> nothing, just, um, why don't we watch the movie? Okay. I guess Chivalry's not dead. Nope, not yet. I'm gonna walk you to the front door. Oh, no. I mean, you, you really shouldn't leave Jenny no. in the car by herself. It's okay. I'm, I'm She's fine. okay. She's okay. Just, just a minute, just to see you to your door. I like you, Harrison. I, I really do. But you just want to be friends. No. No? It's just that we're rapidly becoming so much more than that. See, that that's that's the thing. Yeah, well, give it a chance, Holly. I mean, just because we're becoming friends. Yeah, I, mean, I just really like my space, you know? And I'm, I'm beginning to get so comfortable with you. I'm really starting to trust you, you know? I haven't been able to do that in a really long time. I'm not asking you for anything. It's just so Jenny, you know, you are, it says so much about you. I don't even know what her mother's talking about. I mean, I have faith in your abilities. You just have to have faith in you. Thanks. Connors, it's not you. It's really not you, it's me. It's just that I've, I've been burned before, you know, and I just, I don't want to put my hand back in the fire. I just, I can't. Can't go through life being afraid, huh? Maybe you can just give me a little more time. It's the best I can do. What you doing? Reading the classifieds. Classifieds. Looking for a job. Thought you had a job. Full time job. But don't you get paid for writing your stories? No one seems to want them. Well, what about your instruction booklets? Can't figure those out either. I'll help you. Oh, yeah, you're right. What's the number on the back of the white one? 
26 B. B. And how about the brown one and the black one? 26A. All right, nice. How many pieces do we have left? About eight. Eight? That's not so bad. So why was it we were doing this again? Well, someone's got to write the instructional manual to figure out how to assemble these things, right? Wait, I think if this one goes over here... You see, this is what I don't understand. I have the diagram, but this piece does not fit into this piece. Why don't you try turning it around? That's not going to work. I think we got it. Plug it in, see if okay. it works. All right. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's not supposed to do that. Oh. The off switch. Oh. You're absolutely right. Harrison is a great storyteller. Here, why don't you hold this for luck? Okay. Now, are you sure that's the right address? Yeah, I copied it from one of his other envelopes. All right, and I waited at the office to make sure we had enough postage, so... Okay. Why don't you call him? Uh, well, Jenny, it's not that simple, you know. He misses you. Look, I can't explain it to you, you know, it's, it, you wouldn't understand. But you miss him too, don't you? Don't you? Come on, Jenny. Come on. Airmail! Mr. Dodo, now you can fly! yourself. Mom? Honey, hi. Come here. You look like you have grown an inch. We weren't supposed to come here until next week. We didn't have enough time. Time for what? Fred and I came back a week early. We're going to take you up to Canada with us. What about Harrison? I'm sorry, honey. There's nothing I can do. Come with me, and no arguing. Don't make this difficult. No! Harrison! Come on, Daddy, sweetheart. We're no. going up to Canada. It will be fun. Harrison! No! Harrison! 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 Harrison!
Yo, thanks for your time, Mr. Sullivan. I'm sorry, Mr. Tyler. I know this must be difficult for you. Sometimes you do need money to buy happiness. This guy writes nothing but pulp novels. You're having a market for that right now. Mr. O'Donnell, this is a package I forgot to give you. It's from Mr. Tyler. Okay. <laughs> Another gimmick. <laughs> uh, Mr. Dodo rings the bell. <laughs> Probably a murder mystery for children. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is funny. Maybe they could use this in our kids' department. Send this down to Monica. I want to get her opinion on this. And Claire. Get this Harrison what's-his-name on the horn for me, will you? Mr. Tyler, I've reviewed your application. Very impressive. Mommy's not planning a trip here anytime soon, and uh, I can't leave here right now. Well, I hope I see you too. Yeah, real soon. Yeah, I miss you too. I love you lots. Okay. Oh, that's great, Peter. Thank maybe you. uh maybe round out his beak a little more. Let's try to make him look as aesthetically cute as possible. Uh how about adding that stitching on his side? That's a nice touch. Yeah. Hey, let's give him a Cuban cigar. <laughs> Just kidding. Three more boxes in the bedroom, and I am done. So your landlady won't give you any more time? She found a buyer. Well, where are you going to go? I don't know. I'll figure that out when I get there. 
You know, um, if you want, Harrison, you could stay with me. <laughs> I mean, for a little while. Okay. Thanks. I really miss her. I know you do. I really miss her, too, you know. She brought out a side of me I never knew I had. Yeah. If it weren't for her, I probably would have never let my guard down. <laughs> I wanted to talk to you so bad. Yeah? Well, you gave up way too easy. <laughs> yeah. Now, Jenny, on the other hand, she wouldn't take no for an answer. Oh. No way. Man, she was so stubborn. Uh -huh. <laughs> Someone's having a party. Just a great call, I guess. Hey. Hello? I'm Mr. Tyler. Yeah, yeah, he's right here. Hold on a second. For you. Who is it? Who's calling, please? Tell him it's a friend of Mr. Dodo's. He says it's a friend of Mr. Dodo's. Friend of Mr. Dodo's? Oh, is this some kind of a crank? What? How do you know Mr. Dodo? Oh, you're just... Hello, who is this? Uh, Harrison, Mr. Tyler, Dan O'Donnell, O'Donnell Publishing. Yes. I have a message for you. Uh huh. What is it? That uh, detective manuscript you sent me. Oh. Uh, it stinks. <laughs> Look, I haven't submitted anything to your publishing house in a long time. Okay. I mean, I, I, you know, I got a rejection notice for time kills, and that was about. He sent a package. Oh, and that recent novel, uh, Terror by Night, really does suck, Mr. Tyler. But. I love Mr. Dodo Rings the Bell. Mr. Dodo's go-kart day and Mr. Dodo's hole-in-one. Uh, Mr. O'Donnell, I... Call me Dan. I'm not sure what to say, Dan. Just promise me you'll write four more to complete the series. And I'll express the contracts overnight. Oh, and, uh, Harrison, I see Saturday morning cartoons, too. Yeah, me too. Okay. All right, I'll get, I'll get back to you. Thanks. See, um... Well, well, Jenny, she just... Right. And then I just typed it up and... All right, hey. Get published. <laughs> hey. <laughs> oh, we got a call, Jenny. No, 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 no. Yep. Let's not call her yet. I, I don't want to disappoint her in case it doesn't work out. Okay. You're pretty sneaky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just one, dear. Anything? Something educational. Tyler has asked that the court consider his request for the full custody of his only child, Jenny Morrison. Your Honor, if I may. I would like to make the court be aware that though Mr. Tyler may be perfectly capable of supporting little Jenny now, he was not in the child's life for the first six years. Objection. Sustained. This child needs her mother, Your Honor. The mother that brought her up the mother that took care of her, and the mother that understands what her little girl needs. Mr. Tyler has absolutely no experience as a father, none. Your Honor, if I may, Mr. Tyler was not aware that he even had a daughter. 
until he accidentally came across her birth certificate at the passport office. Is this true? Yes, sure. Melissa Morrison deliberately withheld this important fact of Jenny's existence from him and was going to continue to do so. Objection, Your Honor. Denied. Thank you, Mr. Tyler. By the way, my granddaughter loves Mr. Doo-Doo joins the circus. <laughs> Mr. Tyler, isn't it true that while Jenny Morrison was under your supervision, that she went missing for several hours without you knowing her whereabouts? She told me she had a piano lesson. A piano lesson? Confused, you simply believed her? I didn't know what to believe. I, I'd only known her for a couple of days. Exactly. See, Mr. Tyler, you know nothing about this little girl. Yet you were her father. Objection. Sustained. That's all. No, 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 no. At the time, I didn't I, I didn't know I was Jenny's father. Melissa just apparently forgot to mention it, huh? Kind of slip your mind, is that it? Huh? All right. Let's behave like adults, please. We have to remember we're here to resolve the situation in the child's best interest. Your Honor, I'm not saying that Melissa's a bad mother. But what I am saying is that it's disruptive to take a child to another country. And not only is it disruptive, it makes my visitation rights virtually impossible. Jenny was the best thing. that ever happened to me. That little girl was always so optimistic. She always had a smile on her face, and she was truly happy when we were together. I loved that little girl as much as any father has ever loved his little girl. I can afford to support her financially now. That's not a problem. But money, money doesn't mean anything to a child. I mean, most of the things that we did, we didn't spend money. I just wanted the best for her. I mean, I can afford to send her to the best schools now. I can afford the best health care. That's a bonus. But my love for this child has nothing to do with money. I'd like to speak to the judge. One moment, please. Apparently, we have a visitor. Adorable. If it's all right with the court, I will see her in. Sorry, we cannot allow you to stay in the courtroom. You are a cutie. Thank you, my honor. <laughs> Please show it to counsel. Since the defense has not objected to the reading of this letter, I will therefore present it for the record, as the child's statement. It would be nice. You will pardon my smile, but uh, the spelling is not quite, no. The spelling is unique. It would be nice if you can read my letter out loud. I love my mummy terribly, but she doesn't have time to play with me like my daddy does. My mummy is like my mummy. My daddy, Harrison, is like my best friend. Whatever decision you make, Mr. Judge, I know it will be the best decision. I just don't want anybody angry at each other. Do you like candy tarts? I hope you do, because I have put some in here. Here is my card. Is in here. 
two from Jenny Morrison. Mr. Tyler, it is apparent that you are more than qualified to support Jennifer and to provide her with the best education that money can buy. However, Ms. Morrison seems also to be quite capable of supporting her daughter. This situation is very difficult when a child has to be placed with one parent or the other. I would have to rule that the little girl resides with her mother as custodial parent in Canada. As non-custodial parent, Mr. Tyler has full visitation rights granted by the court. And since the custodial parent and the child are quite a distance away in their relocation, Mr. Tyler is entitled to uh, extended holiday visits, if he so desires. Apparently money doesn't buy happiness, huh? I'm sorry, Mr. Tyler. Court will now recess for 15 minutes and resume with the Maxwell versus Delman case. Almost 3,000 miles away. This is the next best thing. It's like looking into a window, far, far away. You're right, it's like a magical window. That's good. Listen to this. Then he turns the car around and drives right through it. <laughs> Turn it oh. off, honey. It's past your bedtime. Now, our next guest is having quite an impact around our house with our little daughter, Liberty. And maybe if you have some munchkins around your house, the same thing's happening. It's happening all over the country. Now, you probably won't recognize him, but you will certainly recognize this face. Please welcome mommy, the author mommy, Daddy, of Mr. Don't Doo -Doo you be. Are you using that video phone again? I've told you it's not a toy. Mr. Harrison Tyler. Hi. Pleasure to meet you. Welcome. Nice to have you aboard. It's Dodo. Dodo, of course, not Dodo. <laughs> well, tell me, how does a guy who starts out being a mystery writer end up writing children's books? Well, Casey, if it weren't for my daughter, Jenny, then there would not be a Mr. Dodo today. Is that right? Yeah. How old is Jenny? Jenny's uh, six years old. Now, very, why wouldn't there special. be a Mr. Dodo today? Well, Jenny was a great inspiration to me. She, uh, she taught me to uh, never give up. She taught me to believe in myself and my writing, to trust myself. And she especially taught me to get back into touch with that inner child that I thought I'd lost forever. So. Oh, my goodness. How old is she? She's six, and Ooh. I love her to death. If she were watching right now, yeah. what would you say to her? Well, she's probably not up at this hour, but, um, but if she is, I just... I, I want her to know I love her, and I, I miss her very much. Your father's right. You shouldn't be up at this hour. Go to bed. Wasn't Daddy great? I told you to go to bed. I want to finish my puzzle. I am your mother, and I have just told you to go to bed. Now I am sick of you talking back to me, and I am sick of this stupid Mr. Dodo. I hate you! <laughs> Now, getting back to these, these stories, what's the first one you ever wrote? Yep, Mrs. Harrison. It's Melissa. I thought I'd call before I came over. Melissa. Can we come in? We? Oui. Hey, pumpkin. What's this about? 
I was wrong, Harrison. You're the best father in the world. Why now? For weeks after the hearing, I couldn't sleep. My conscience kept telling me I'd made a mistake. You mean I can keep? I want Jenny to live with you. She needs a stable upbringing, and my lifestyle isn't stable. Jenny's not really happy. I'd be a better mother if I just didn't get in the way. Since I met you No more looking for the right one All those days are through No more sitting alone in a crowd Hearing music that's always too loud Life is more than a song to me It's a symphony Since I found you I've come alive Before we met I don't know how I survive now I know how it feels to fall head over heels into love all oh, my searching is through I'm in love with you you. 